So far, when we send a GET request to the slash products endpoint, it's returning all of the products by default. So this is basically going to fetch every single product from the database and return each one of those as part of this JSON response. Now, in recent videos, we've shown how to filter that down using search parameters, and those are defined in the URL itself. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at pagination in a Django REST framework API. Now, the reason we might want to introduce this is because this is fine for now because we don't have a lot of products in the database. But let's imagine we've started the next Amazon and we've got millions of products in the database. Returning all of those products or any kind of variation of them is going to take a long time and that's not the best experience for your API clients. Now, you can imagine if you have a Django REST framework backend and a React frontend as one example, React sends a request to this endpoint and it gets millions of products and tries to store them as part of its state that's probably going to crash the browser and it's going to make the front-end application completely unresponsive. So we're going to address that in this video using pagination. Let's go to the documentation just now and I'm going to go to the API reference and we're going to see that Django REST Framework provides different pagination options. The first one is called page number pagination and that accepts a single page number in the request query parameters. So for example, here we have slash accounts and it's adding that parameter of page and it's setting it to the page number that they want to fetch. And the response is adjusted as well because it contains the next URL, for example, page five, as well as the previous URL with page three. Now, all we need to do to enable page number pagination is to add it as the default pagination class in the REST framework setting. And we can also add it on a per view basis as well. Now, as well as that, we have something called limit offset pagination. And this mirrors the syntax that you use when you look up multiple database records. For example, it's got a limit and an offset keyword that you can add to the URL. So the limit indicates the number of records you want to fetch. In this case, it's set to 100. And we also have an offset of 400. And that will be almost directly translated in the underlying database to SQL limit and offset statements. And these do vary, I think, depending on the database that you're using, but often they're called limit and offset. So that's another way to fetch a specific set of records. You can explicitly set the limit which gives you the number you want to get back, as well as the offset, which is where you want to start from in the database. And there's one final one called cursor pagination, and this is a bit more advanced. I'm not going to cover this in this video. I think the other two are sufficient for most use cases. Now let's start with page number pagination. What I'm gonna do is go to the REST framework setting, and let's add this default pagination class to that dictionary. So let's go to our project, and we're gonna to go to settings.py, and we've got REST framework at the bottom here, and we're setting a number of options, we're now going to add default pagination class to those options. Now, once we've added that, there's another option that we can add, and that's the page size. It's set to 100 here, and that would be a typical value for an API response. I'm gonna copy this, and let's go back to our dictionary here, but I'm going to set this to something that's a bit lower than 100. Let's say five, because we don't have a very big database at the moment. So in order to see this pagination in action, we're gonna set the page size to five. Now actually, just by adding these two, we're going to be able to see this pagination in action. So let's go back to our API here on the browsable API in Django REST Framework. And if we refresh this page, we can see we get back a different type of response now. Now the response has a count and that indicates the number of products in the database. We also have a link to the next URL, which is page number two. And you can see it added that page query parameter. Previous is set to null because this is page one of the paginated response. And then finally, we have a key in the response called results. And that gives us back all of the paginated objects for this page of the results. So now we have only five products in the database. And notice on the browsable API, we have these pagination links here. So if I click page two, we're taken to the second page of the results. And because this is the last page, we can see next is set to null in this case. And we also have the link back to the previous response. So it's very useful to have these links between the pages present in the response because your API client in Python or any other language can just access these links and then send the subsequent request to those links to get the next page of data. Now we can also combine pagination with the ordering that we saw in a previous video. So if I set the ordering here to the name field, and you can see the products do have a name here. In this case, the product is called television. If we order it by name, what we're going to see is that the results are ordered by the name. So each page of data has that ordering and that's done behind the scenes by adding the order by to the SQL query and then using those limit and offset keywords to fetch the right page of data. So we can see here the products are in order of the name. And if we go to page two, we get the next set of products. 
So that's all working fine with the ordering parameter as well. So what we've added here is very simple. It's just two configurations for Django REST framework. And these are going to be applied to all API endpoints that return a list of data. What we can actually do though in the views.py file is we can apply pair view configuration. So for example, here we have a product list create API view. And that's the one that is associated with this response here. Now we can change the pagination for this on the pair view basis. So let's go back to views.py and we're importing page number pagination here from restframework.pagination. And then if we go down here, what I'm going to do is add the pagination class. That's another attribute that you can add to a REST framework generic view or a view set. And we're going to set that to page number pagination. And then when we have the pagination class, we can also set the page size attribute directly and let's set it to two for this view. And then when we save that, if we go back to our API here, I'm going to go back to the first page of data here and refresh. And you can see now we only have two products in the response. So we've overridden the default settings in this view and we're telling Django REST Framework for this endpoint, we only want a page size of two. So if we go back to our API response, we can then page through these and you can see we have many more pages now because we have that smaller page size. Now I want to highlight a small problem here. So what I'm going to do is go back to the terminal here and I'm going to stop the Django development server and I'm going to restart that server now at the bottom. And when this restarts, we're going to see a message when we visit this particular URL. So I'm going to remove the ordering from this URL. And if we look here, you can see we're getting a message and that's an unordered object list warning. Pagination may yield inconsistent results with an unordered object list. Now we can actually remove that by adding an ordering here to the query set. So this product.objects.all statement, what we can do is we can change that and we can add an order by and then pass the primary key into that. That is the default ordering anyway, I believe, but that is going to prevent this error. So if we go back to the page and refresh the page, we're going to see we get back the products without that error. So let's see a couple more things and then we're going to move on. Now we can also configure the name of the parameter. So if we go back to the API here, you can see in the URL, the parameter is called page. What we can do is customize that and we can do that again on a pair view basis, or we can do it globally for the entire Django application. I would say for consistency, it's probably better to do this globally. But what we can do again is access the pagination class and then that has a field called page query param. So I'm going to set this to page num. And what that means, if we go back to the browsable API here and we go back to the products endpoint, when we go to page two, you can see at the top here, the URL now says page num. And that's also reflected in the next and previous URLs that you see at the bottom. They have that new name for the query parameter. Now we can also optionally allow the client to control the number of records on each page. Right now this is hard coded. You can see it's set to two per page. And that's because we've set the page size here, but we can actually allow the client to customize how many items they are fetching per page. Now this is useful and you might have seen this before on websites where you have some kind of table and you're given the option maybe to see 10 or 25 or 100 records per page. I'm going to show you Django REST Framework's way of customizing this. So again, it's something we're going to add to this pagination class. And what we can do is add a page size query parameter. And I'm going to set that to a name of size. Now let's go to the Django REST Framework documentation before we try this out. And we have a section here on modifying the pagination style. Now in order to modify how pagination works, we've already seen page size and we've just added the page size query param and we've set that to size in our case. And we can also set a max page size as well. Now what I'm going to do in order to showcase this is go back to our API here and let's remove the page number. And what we're going to add here is a query parameter called size and let's set that to three. Now when we execute this, you can see that in the results we have three products. And if we were to change that to one, we would see that the results contains a single product. So now we have customization over how many products we actually get back per page. And we control that on the client by passing a size parameter into the URL. And that gives us back these results. Now one problem you might have noticed with this is that the client could pass a huge number here. And if you have a lot of data in the database, that's going to put a lot of strain on that database and it's going to return a huge number of products. So that other setting here of max page size, we can actually add that as well. So let's say we want to limit this to a particular size. We're going to set max page size and I'm going to set that to six in this case. Let's go back to the browser here and we have a size here of seven million or something like that. When we execute it again, you are going to see that we only get back six results and we have a link to the next page as well. 
what I'm going to do just to make this a bit more manageable is I'm going to show two here so we can see we get two results and if we go back to our view class here and we change the max size to four and save this let's go back to the browser again if we refresh the page we get two products but if I try to set this to five we're going to see that we get back results here containing four products so instead of five we're getting four and that's because we've limited the max page size to four when we allow the clients to pass this parameter. So that's the page number pagination. Let's briefly cover the other one that I mentioned, and that was the limit offset pagination class. Let's go to the top of views.py and where we defined page number pagination, let's add limit offset pagination as well. So we're importing that and then we can change the pagination class on the view. I'm going to change that to limit offset pagination and I'm going to comment out these parameters here. Now let's go back to REST Framework's browsable API and I'm on the slash products endpoint and we have two pages here. If I click page two, notice that it adds an offset parameter to the URL and the offset is set to five here. The reason for that is because we have the page size being set to five in settings.py. So that's going to map to an offset of five when we use limit offset pagination. But we can again control this and if we go back to settings.py we can change the page size to two here and then when we go back to the API and go to slash products this time when we go to page two you can see we have an offset of two here and then when we go to page three we have an offset of four and that's going to increase in increments of two by default. Now let's add the limit to this. By default the limit is set to two so the limit matches the page size but if we add that as another query parameter and let's say we want to set that to four what that's going to do is it's going to return records starting from the offset of six and it's going to return the next four records. So instead of getting two results as per the page size, this time we're getting back four. And if we go to page one here and keep the limit, you can see we get the first four results in this data set. And notice we have a new format for the next URL here. So we have slash products and then it's adding the limit and this time an offset of four to the next URL. If we click that, you can see that we get back another page of data. And the next offset is gonna be eight. Again, the limit is four, so the offset is gonna increase in increments of whatever the limit is for this query. And in the same way for the previous URL, the offset is gonna decrease by whatever the limit is as you go back one page at a time. So limit offset pagination is another useful pagination class that's built into Django REST framework. And it allows you to get X number of records from a given offset in the database. So that can be useful as well. And if we go to the configuration of this particular class, the limit offset pagination class here has a number of attributes that you can override. And again, you can set a max limit to prevent the client sending a huge number and overwhelming your server and database. And you can also change the name of the query parameter for the limit and also for the offset if you want to. So that's been a short introduction on the amazingly interesting topic of pagination. If you're using pagination in your APIs, let us know in the comments and let us know what your preferred approach is for Django REST framework. And if you have any use cases for the cursor pagination, it's not something I've used before, please let us know in the comments as well. That would be really interesting to know about. Now in the next set of videos, we're going to move on to something new and that's view sets in Django REST framework. So that's what's coming up in the course. And later on, we'll look at more complex topics such as integration with frameworks like React and looking at tools like Joser for authentication. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link in the description and in the pinned comment. And if you want to learn about Django testing, I've recently released a series with the NetNinja channel on testing in Django. And we've got a new video dropping every day for that. We're going to dive into all of the core components of Django and how to test them, such as models, views, authentication and more. And we're also going to look at more advanced topics like mocking and test performance optimization, as well as coverage.py in this series. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.